Hetepu, Aslam Alaikum, Namaste, Haru Nefer, may Buddha bless you. Grand Rising, this is Kisak Maya Keparu with another video for you. And in this video, we're going to talk about Haruku Huti, the warrior god. But before I get into that, I want you to hit the like button on this video. If this is the first, if this is your first time to my channel, hit the subscribe button to get notifications on when I go live and when I upload recorded videos. If you would like to know more about my spiritual teachings, you can scroll down below, click on one of the ebook links, download it, and start reading today. Ebooks are absolutely free. However, if you want to know more and follow that rabbit down the rabbit hole to see how deep it goes, you can become a paid trans supporter for as little as a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars per month. It's up to you, and you can cancel it anytime. You'll get access to instructional videos on the esoteric videos that will teach you how to meditate how to breathe properly how to do self-hypnosis to get rid of negative habits how to contact your ancestors how to astro project how to put together a magical protective amulet how to work with crystals and if you are in a stair level supporter you'll get all your oracle readings for free so become a Patreon supporter today. Last but not least, share this video with family and friends so we can get the revolution started. Huru Nefer. How are you today? So one of the things I always say at my preamble is share this video with family and friends so we can get the revolution started because we are not about, and we as Kemetians or Osarians, are not about starting uh, a civil war or a coup d'etat. We approach things from a very higher perspective. If you research the Maharishi effect or the hundred monkey syndrome, we understand that by getting people to shift their vibrational frequency, their resonance matrix you can actually get a change in the physical world about you. The more people you engage in this, the more powerful the effect becomes. And then therefore there is no need to grab political weapons. There is no need to crash or storm the White House. We don't wanna do that. Because right does not, um, sorry, let me say it again. Might does not make right. Just because the majority of people want to do something doesn't make it right. And there's no saying with the Chinese Oracle I Ching. If a million people say it's one thing, but the I Ching says it's not, then the I Ching is correct because it is the word of God. And we have yet to adapt that and to rise to a culture whose consciousness is of the higher level beyond the ego. Because most of us in society are sheeple. We look at, it's the group effect. We look at what the group is doing. And even though we may think our behavior is correct, we will inevitably side with the group. They've even done experiments where they showed a square. This is in a laboratory to a test group of subjects. And it was about 10 people. Nine of them were planted there. The, the only, there was only one person who was authentic who was there for the test. And when they showed this square, they had the nine people say it was a circle. And the one person looked at it and at first was very, very puzzled and was sure it was a square. But then after repeating the experiments with triangles, you know, uh, rectangles, things of that nature, and getting the nine people to come to a consensus about a false reality, 
that one person began to shift his belief and align with the nine other people. And then all 10 people were in, cons uh, in consensus. That's the, the herd mentality. You don't want to be a part of that. You have to be secure enough to understand that although society is wacko, you're not going to go along with that. And you know what the truth is. That is very, very important. So even though the majority of people on this planet abide by the two-party system, the Hegelian dialectic, we know that that's incorrect. Two choices is no choice. You, you have the choice of bad and worse. And it's specifically set up that way. And most of the people in the country, in the world, go by that. And those of us who are awake, our third eye is awake, we can see how insane that is. And we keep voting and participating in that thinking that there will be a change in the government. No, the, the cards are stacked against you. You can't win. The, the odds are in the house's favor, but we keep doing it. So a person operating on a higher spiritual level knows exactly what to do. And I'll tell you the example of what to do is from this movie, the old movie back in 1984 that I saw in the theater on 42nd Street in Times Square on my half day of school, high school. It, the movie is called War Games with Matthew Broadwick. And I'm not gonna go into the deep into the story, but the computer ran simulations of a third world war against Russia. And in these simulations, it ran actually like thousands of simulations. And in these simulations, there was no winner. It was mad, mutually assured destruction of both, of both sides. So the computer, after running these thousands of simulations, stopped and looked at Matthew Broadwick's character and said this, the only winning move is not to play the game. So that's how we have to approach this. Now I'm not saying do nothing that's worse, but I'm saying don't play their game. Bow out. It's like somebody gives you a mark, you know, they want to play poker with a mark, a deck of cards. You can play the game, but you can say, but we're not going to play with that deck. The problem that we have today in today's world is that there are a lot of people who know the truth. Who are on the path of ma'at. But you see, the problem is the truth means nothing without the ability to enforce it. Police cannot enforce the law unless there is a threat of imprisonment. If a cop could only like pull you over and ask that you do right and walk away, you probably would never do right. You probably make the same mistake over again and run through that red light. But the fear of getting your driver's license revoked and you put in prison it's enough to deter you from doing the wrong thing. Now, I can get into a whole dissertation on this because this is actually a very good concept to understand and leads deeper into the concept of ma'at, meaning that in ancient Kemet, there were no so-called police because the people policed themselves um, through to um, cultural indoctrination. See, the goal of every person in Kemet was to be godlike. And when you're making that your goal on a daily basis, 
you are not going to be susceptible to robbing a bank, jumping the turnstile. You know, these things will not come up in your mind. And this is what happened in ancient Kemet. Everyone wanted to be godlike. And the thought of someone being a serial killer or a pedophile was foreign to them. They would not understand those concepts. Now, some may disagree and say, oh, no, 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 no. They, they, they had uh, murder and stuff like that. Yeah, they did. And if you look at the later dynasties, after the invasions and foreign peoples, did we see that really come into play? You know, but I digress. So what we want here to look at is that you can lay down a law, which is ma'at in this society. But if you do not have the ability to enforce it, then the law means nothing. Now, God's law is ma'at. God's ability to enforce that law is Haruku Huti, the warrior God. And he plays a vital role in the Port Neturu, the company of the gods or the tree of life, and the Osirian drama, the story of Osar and Aset. Because he had the battle set. And I'll explain that. But just to give you a visual representation, this is Haruku Huti. Red has a sphere with a with a head on it, a sickle to cut his head off, and that is it is said that Haruka Huti cuts his head off. And what does that mean? That means he separates himself from his person. See, the self is your true self, your God state. Your person is your ego, your persona. In order for you to engage in a dangerous field, like being an assassin, be a warrior, a soldier, a policeman, a fireman, in order for you to engage in those dangerous fields, you must invoke from within, because all these deities are within us as faculties, you must invoke Haruku Huti, because that energy will kill your emotions. Remember the old days in, in, in the uh, medieval times with the king and he had an executioner that would cut your head off? Well, what if that executioner had attack of conscience or emotionalism? Then he could not perform his job. So he had to separate his emotions from himself so that he could execute, cut the person's head off. And if you recall, even in some great movies, the villains would say to the protagonist, it's not personal. This is nothing personal. Demonstrating that they are putting their emotions to the side to perform their job. So Haruku Huti is the warrior spirit within you. The ability to separate your head from your person, yourself from your person. Your true self has a free will. It is not programmed or conditioned to like or dislike anything. It is not programmed and conditioned to be fearful or to be doubtful. It is at peace. But the person has anxiety, doubts, fears, wayward and backwards thinking. So whenever you are tasked with performing a very difficult job, you must invoke the Haruku Uti spirit and he will assist you in getting the job done. Now, Haruku Huti is good for a short duration. Because if one were to keep up that energy 
it would exhaust you, it would kill you. Can you imagine soldiers fighting a war for two years? That would be physically exhausting, physically taxing to them. They can't. So our wars and campaigns would last six weeks, two months. Then we would have to put fresh boots on the ground. You're riding a horse and you test that horse and put that horse to the max and see how fast that horse can go. After a while, that horse is tired and is going to stop and can go no more until it rests and gets water. You'll need a fresh horse to go beyond that point. So Haruka Huti is good for short duration, short bursts of energy. I remember when I was working with an ad agency and we were trying to make an important deadline. So I was working four in the morning for, to four in the morning for about two, three weeks straight. And I came to my boss and I said, I can't keep this up much longer. My body is physically exhausted. I go home and get only three or four hours sleep. I'm lucky if I get four hours sleep. So it tells you that Haruka Huti is not meant to be with you for the long term. In addition, I remember doing readings for people with the Oracle of Tehuti. And some women, without coming, without giving me the details of the problems they were facing in their relationship, would come up with the Haruka Huti card. And this is not to point fingers at anybody, because we all have our faults. But a lot of these women, I told them that you are confrontational and argumentative. Thus, the Haruku card is here. Combine that with a Sebek Tem, you got a person who has foul mouth. I said, a woman should not have a Haruku Huti card like that. And vice versa, I would see men who would continually come up with on a set card. A set is meek, demure, shy. And I would tell the men, it's not good that you're coming up with that all set card. That's energy is for women, that's not for you. And a lot of times in our society, the roles have been reversed to where women are coming up with too much of that hurukulti energy, ready to jump in somebody's face. And then the all set card is coming up a lot with the men being too timid to take action, to deal with things that go on in the community, like George Zimmerman. Like that woman who killed Emmett Till, or had him killed, and still alive today. That's because you are a set Tim. You're too passive, too reserved. That's not good for male energy. You're too readily to comply. And then there are some brothers who have too much hurukuhuti, ready to fight you everything you say. And some women have too much all set. Don't stand up for themselves. So I just want you to get an understanding of Haruku Huti. Let's go and take a look at where he stands on the comedic tree of life. If I may pull it up. That's, oh, I know. I was like, my computer is not working correct today. But I figured out what the problem is. Uh, let me see here.
All right. So this is the company of the gods. And each deity represents a sphere on the tree of life or a faculty within you. And if you see, Harukuhuti is number five, the midway point. The ten spheres, and uh, Harukuhuti represents the separation, the cutting off. But what do we see it tells us here about Harukuhuti? He is a divine justice, executioner of the law, analytical thinking. And he is the center, the numeratical center, I think it's trying to say, of the tree of life. True. And he is the God that you would call on if you felt that someone has done you a great wrong. When all else fails, when the judicial system fails and you have a evil person like a George Zimmerman running around signing Skittles because he murdered a young boy, you must then call on Haruka Huti And in the comedic story, Haruka Huti dated Hedharu. And Hedharu is a sexual energy, a passion. And you combine that with the intensity of Haruka Huti. And that is a lust, love, passionate couple. But Hedharu eventually married Haru, the king. So let us read a little bit about Haruka Huti from the Maduna Ter, Volume 1 by Ra Unatha Amen. Haruka Huti is also called Haru Ben Hutet, is the divine principle that safeguards our existence from the injustices of others. It works sternly through the law that states that you reap what you sow. Be consistent in being just with others, and you will be spiritually protected by the divine power. Its aggressive power is also the foundation of the temperament of natural athletes, warriors, business executives, and so on. So if you watch Wall Street, one of my favorite characters um, in Wall Street is Gordon Gecko. He was one of my favorite character. So he would be an Harukuhuti person because he's this, he, he separates himself from his emotions. He's goal focused and oriented. He's shrewd, cutthroat. He took um, his apprentice's father's company and tore it apart, or, you know, liquidated it because he saw an opportunity to make more money. Thus his saying, greed is good. In the comedic tradition, it is the form in which Haru fights against Set in order to regain the throne. And this symbolizes control over oneself that the latter usurped. The seemingly contradiction that arises from considering ben -Hutep a form of Haru is cleared up when we realize that ultimately there is one, only one deity in the world with different faculties. You see, the Western mindset tries to say Africans are pagan by believing in many, many de deities, polytheism, but that's not true. Africans believe in the one deity coming as the many. While Haru corresponds to the steady supply of, of adrenaline that enables us to carry out all activities of externalization, Harukuhuti corresponds to the extreme surges of adrenaline that support our aggressive sexual arousal and immune responses. This is how you get stoked up. Harukuhuti 
is your mixed martial arts fighters, is your wrestlers, is your boxers. Because you need that surge of adrenaline to get you going, to defeat your enemy. And many of the men in today's society lack that Haruku Huti fire within them. They're hanging out with a set too much. You know what I mean? You see, we're living in a world that is, is a confirmed wrongdoer, as the I Ching would say. 21st hexagram. That is the I Ching authorizing punishment for wrongdoing. But there's no means to punish those who are doing us wrong. And the reason why there we perceive that there are no means is because we're looking purely at the physical and not the metaphysical. See, I did, I did a broadcast the other day on your guides, your spirit guides and ancestors. When you start to understand that you are a multidimensional being and that you exist in all places at once because consciousness has no locality, it's not fixed in any one point in space and time. When you understand that these different realms exist and you know there is an existence of interdimensional beings, spirit guides, and angels who can readily assist you if you are wronged. And you must learn to call upon them to help you with your task. When something does not go our way, and we feel victimized. We do a Harukuhuti ritual and ask for Rukuhuti to step in on our behalf to right the wrong. But we're, as a society, too much calling on Jesus, this very feminine, passive, frail man, not to belittle him or berate him in any way. But that's what the image communicates. It doesn't communicate a warrior spirit. Because you have people in this world who will fight you tooth and nail to live wrongly. And they are so screwed up in their mentality, they think they're doing the right thing when actually they're the bad guys. So we must be careful in this society because they have turned everything upside down and they've done it on purpose to make men very weak and women very, uh, women very masculine. And if you understand ma'at, which is holistic balance and everybody playing their role and in doing so will support the whole when you step out of side of your role and a set thinks you know set or isis thinks she can be Haruko Huti, we got problems then the entire structure falls apart cuz now she wants to be Haruko Huti. she's trying to tell Haruko to step aside and Haruko is saying listen you don't have the guts for this job <laughs> you are a nurturer a supporter, a divine mother. This job is not your role. And we often think, and because we're, we're, we're part of this backwards Christian mentality, that we have to turn the other cheek. We have to forgive our enemies. No, there are times when God says, sin harukuhuti. There were these people who got shot up in the church by a white supremacist, killed almost everybody in the church. And then when they were taking the bodies off the church and they had the, the gentleman in the handcuffs who committed the crime, the remaining churchgoers looked at him and said, we forgive you, we forgive you. And I'm just like, are you out of your mind? Are you insane to say something so stupid and imbecilic? 
God would never authorize you to say something like that. But they've been taught to be so passive, to be so weak, to take no action. Even when trouble comes into their own home. No, I don't forgive you for coming into my home, the sacred place of church, and shooting up people. A church, for God's sakes. I, that is the most extreme of, of, of behavior and such an atrocity. No, I will forgive you if years later you have seen to turn your life around. But for right now, I hope the judicial system throws you away and um, uh, blocks you up and throws away the key. And you will be justified in saying that. Not that, oh, uh, um, I forgive you. No, as soon as they were taking the bodies out, and if I was standing there looking at him, I would say, um, we, we, our, our God, Haruka Huti, is going to pay you a visit. And there will be blood. That's how we do it. Let me just answer this question real quick by Hawkeye. Um, nothing's going to happen to them. But you're going to have to then at that point, um, get rid of them, purge them. If they're not going to obey your cause, then they're of no use and no good to you. So send them back into the realm from which they came. So it's as simple as that. You know, if you're not going to obey my commands, then go back to the realm from which you came. And that happens, you know, you invoke a spirit or, or, or demon and do something they say. And, they, I, and most times that comes from um, them gauging you. They can see you're weak. You have no authority in their eyes. This, this is why it is very, very important that men keep up their testosterone. That they be the builders of the world, the captains of industry, that they be the explorers, the policemen, the firemen, that they do take on these difficult jobs in mining operations, digging tunnels, working with explosives. We need men who can do that. And that's not to say that women can't, but we don't want women in large numbers doing dangerous jobs like that because, you know, there's this thing where if you start having women do that and women start dying, how do we procreate? You then put yourself in a very terrible situation. So anyway, I want to thank you all for tuning in today for this lesson on Haruko Huti. And if you get an opportunity, please donate to the channel and don't forget to hit the like button. And as always, this is Kasak Ma'at Keparu, son of Ma'at and Tehuti. Ma'at is the beautiful goddess Heteru. Till my next broadcast, I'm in the round.